Hey everybody. So today I'm going to be going over some more solo games that I like to play that I recommend you should play. Um, I'm just going to go over them very briefly. Um, so if you want to know more about a game, just let me know. Um, anyway, this one is called Viceroy. And what you're doing is you are bidding for these um, different guys and you'll be placing them in, in um, like a pyramid. So obviously the first couple you're going to be placing on the bottom before you're going to be able to place them in the second row, in the third row, fourth row, and you can go up to the fifth row. But any time that you place them, you get a benefit. So obviously if you place it on the bottom, um, you're going to be getting these benefits um, on the bottom of the card. So, um, so for instance, this is the first row here. So the second row, they'll be getting the second benefit and then you have to pay for that and so on. So building, you're basically building your pyramid and the higher you get, the better benefits you're going to be getting. So that is Viceroy. The next one I have is called Legacy. Um, this is a very interesting game. Um, you can play it one player, it's one to four player. Um, I, just like Viceroy though, um, kind of recommend playing more than you know, two, three people, but I mean, you can play them solo. I, I enjoy playing them solo, but it's not an amazing game playing solo, but it still work, it works. So what you're doing is basically building your family. So you're starting with either a man or a girl, or a man or a woman, I should say. <laughs> um, anyway, for this instance, he's starting with a, uh, the male. And so what you're doing is you have these... Um, deck of, um, a hand of cards that are your friends and you can marry them into the family and every time they you marry them you, they, you get benefits and then you have children and then you can you can uh, you can marry them so when they get older um, then they then you get the benefits of whoever they're marrying so this with this boy once he turns into a man that then the marriage will set in and then you'll get the benefit of each card and then of course you you can build mansions for them, and you get points for that. Um, you get points and more cards for buying titles for them, and so on. Um, and there's also like bon um, missions you can do and objectives and stuff like that. So anyway, that's Legacy. Um, next one is gonna be Fields of Arl. I think that's how you pronounce it. And basically what you're doing is, this is one to two players. Um, it's kind of like a work replacement game. Um, you're basically building up your farm, clearing out your, uh, your um, more area of your, of your farm so you can actually plant more things and you're breeding animals and, and you're going through summers and winters and um, during the summer you can only do certain actions and winters you can only do certain actions. Um, um, you can build carts to ship to your goods to places and then and then they'll build like the road track every time you do that i don't like i said i can do, get it more into it just let me know if you want to know more about this game but I, it's a really good game i just like that it's just simple as far as you're just breeding animals collecting goods upgrading things building carts and and stuff like that and and then expanding your land it's kind of it's kind of fun that's Fields of Arl. Next is, this is obviously an older game. I don't think it's, I don't think you can get it anymore, but I, unless they're like, you know, eBay or whatever, but Runebound. Um, they did make a third edition, but I don't think you can play it solo. Um, it, even though this does say two to six players, but I just play one player, it works fine. Basically you're traveling through this map and then when you land on these little these little markers here, oh, you can't see it, sorry. These little markers here, um, those are encounter markers, and then you obviously draw a card from the color that represents. If you land on a green, you're drawing a green card, and you're gonna be dealing with the monster, and your guys have different benefits, um, things you can do, different powers, skills. Um, anyway, you can, you can upgrade your guys by getting, um, you go to towns and, and trade for gear, and. Um, to battle the monsters encounters and stuff like that and once you 
Of course, once you defeat a monster, that's when you get money in and then your skill points, and then you can level up and stuff like that. So, it's a pretty fun game, just exploring and battling monsters. You know, awesome. <laughs> um, like I said, you, the only way you can get that game is in, uh, right off eBay. So here's kind of, like I said, these are kind of older games, but I like them a lot. Here's another one that's Eldritch Horror. You guys probably know about this one, right? This one's pretty classic. Um, Obviously, um, you can play this one player. I recommend even playing with one player. I'd play with two two um, investigators. Makes it a lot easier. Um, anyway, what you're doing is on your turn. You're either uh, what you're going to be. You're going to be moving, and in, and you're going to be encountering these spots. So on the end of your turn, you'll be drawing a card. And doing whatever the card says, and um, whatever monster you're dealing with, um, you're obviously he has secret has like different goals and like um, I'm trying to oh, they're not called goals. Um, these like missions that you're gonna have to do. Like sometimes the guy will bring out a monster, and you have to defeat him. And then once you defeat him, you place a token on him. And then at the end of the round, after you encounter all these spaces. Um, it goes away, and I think you have, to, you have to beat three missions per monster before he wakes up. And if he wakes up, you flip the card, and there's more things that happen. So, as you're doing that, you can also exp explore these spots to like upgrade your skills and um, try to get different um, uh, uh, cards to help you um, beat the game. And there's monsters you got to defeat. There's portals that open up, um, but I just like the detail in that every card. Every time you go to a spot, you you know you flip a card. Depends on where you are, the car, you know, on the card it'll be different. Um, there's different objectives that happen to you, um, and so on. So um, I recommend getting expansion for this game because it's, I don't know this game has a lot to it. It's kind of hard to explain really quick, but there's a lot to it. <laughs> but um, but it's fun. You're just exploring, getting weapons and spells and. And like I said, those those, those encounter cards you, you that you're uh, encountering and it, it has really good storylines and um, kind of sets the mood a little bit. And then of course you're trying to f deal with all the encounters and also trying to deal with the monsters that come out and and uh, and portals. The portals get overwhelmed because the monsters will be flooding out of these portals. So you got to go and close them um, before it gets too bad. Um, and then of course you got this. The ancient ones, I guess they're called, that will be making it harder for you to <laughs> get things done, um, and also trying to complete the missions and stuff like that. But anyway, want 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 to know more about any of these games? Just let me know. But I'm pretty sure you guys know a lot about Ultra Tour. It's been out for I think since 2010 or something like that. It's about six, seven years old. Um, another one. It's, it's kind of based off the same. People, actually, I guess it is, duh. It's Elder Sign. Now, this is a pretty easy game, just with a base game, dice rolling game. Same kind of thing, you have an ancient one that you're trying to defeat and get to collecting the Elder Signs. And if you don't collect enough by the end of the time, he'll wake up. Um, and then you gotta battle, there's a other way you gotta battle. It's the same kind of thing with Elder Tor. Once he wakes up, it basically kind of goes down kind of fat, downhill kind of fast. So you gotta make sure you're ready for that. If you're not beating them in Elder Signs. Um, but anyway, you're going to each one of these spots. So if I want to go to this card, there's like a certain... Uh, and of course, I can't really show you any of these cards. It kind of give you more example. But um, each card will have like a row of like objectives you have to do. So like in one row, say like... It's on these dice. I don't know if you can really see here. But like there's like a skull, a scroll, and then like investigation. And then... So like that. So basically, one of the cards might have like you have to roll a scroll and then a three investigation. So you roll your dice and and if you roll that then you succeed and you go down to the next row and then if you beat that then you beat the card and you get a benefit or you get a, a negative penalty if you don't beat it. Um, and every time you don't beat a row, so if you fail a roll, then you lose a die and try again. So anyway, um, I do recommend the expansions. I got 
We have the Unseen Forces, and I also have the Omens of Eyes, which if you want it to be harder, which I did, because it's a really easy game, the base game. Omens of Ice is a great expansion, makes it a lot harder. Brings some weather markers and all that good stuff, so that's Elder Signs. Okay, um, next is uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Now this is another, um, I showed a game kind of like this. Uh, I have a, a Wrath of a Shardalon dungeon, uh, D&D. &D. Um, I like these games. They're really, I don't see, the, no, they're simple, but I mean, simple uh, as far as the rules. I mean, the rules aren't too complex, easy to get into. I love dungeon, dungeon crawler games. You know, um, I'm kind of sucker for them. So, but basically what you're doing is you're starting, you start out on a tile. Oh yeah, here's the other, here's the other games here. I don't have the first two, my friend does, but I have Wrath of a Shardalon, which you've probably seen in my other videos, and I have this, the Temple of Elemental Evil. But anyway, um, you start out on it, obviously the whatever mission you're doing on a tile, and you're basically going through, and and what you'll be doing is um, you land on the border, and when you're on the border of a tile, then you get to flip over, you know, your first tile on the stack. There's a huge stack over here, and you flip them over. And because uh, the mission tile will be in the middle somewhere and you're trying to get through these tiles, you know, to get to the objective or whatever it is. There's a lot of scenarios, but anyway. So you're basically trying to explore as fast as you can, but every time you explore, though, you're doing counter cards, which could be bad. You know, things blowing up on you, things, uh, traps, all that good, um, good stuff. Uh, but also, on top of the encounters, you're also dealing with the monsters. So monsters will come out and you're gonna have to um you can you can kind of run away with uh, from the monsters for a while but they'll catch up to you eventually but um you'll be dealing with monsters and each person will have a monster that's put in front of them so if each person has obviously if you're playing solo this won't happen but if you're, each person has the same type of monster um in front of them then it'll activate twice so like if like if this guy got activated on my turn and he, someone else had the same monster, he, he'll get activated twice, basically. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a good game. You just battle monsters, explore, get treasures, and find what more weapons, and then, you know, just whatever your mission is, you're just going for the, you're trying to get through the, you know, through these tiles and um, get to your mission. So that's a dungeon color game, pretty simple. But fun, rolling dice, killing, killing monsters. And I have one more, and this is a brand new game that just came out probably about a month ago, and it's amazing, but it's the second um, version. It's a uh, Mansion of Madness, second edition. edition. It's the second ver um, version of it, yeah. So, yeah, it's awesome, man. This game is... Amazing. Um, it does take a while to play. Um, every mission will probably take about three hours. Depends on how many people are playing. You can play it solo. But I, like I said, even though I play solo, I play with two different people. But I mean, you can play with one person. But but basically, it's you know the um, it's a, you have to have either a computer or a phone or something you know because it's going to use an app basically to. To be played. You cannot play it without a device. It will not work. So what it is is that you start the game up. Do I have my phone on me? Hold on one second. I'm gonna pull it up really quick as I'm talking to you guys. So basically, you have a, your phone, and, and obviously it's free to download. You can actually download it even if you don't have this game. You can just download it just to look at the game if you want. But you just go to New game, you pick out what game you want. There's different, like I said, you can do this for free. Um, the free it's a free app. So anyway, you select what mission you want to do, select first people you want to be, and it starts out with the starting items. And everyone has the starting items, and there's clues. And then it goes into the story. So basically what you're going to be doing is exploring the mansion, and you don't really quite know 
what's exactly going on. You don't really know what your mission is until you start actually getting into it. Like you get like, like this one's like you get a call from the butler saying there's something going on. The your master or whatever the guy is is acting strange. And then, you know, you don't get too much of what you're supposed to do, but throughout searching, so so this is like the starting room. And these will always change. So if I play the same scenario, the chances of me starting out with the same tiles and stuff are, are is pretty slim. Um, but anyway, so what you're doing is that it's investigator phase. So what you're doing is that the game, well, the game set me in here. You can't see me, but you know my my minis will be there on the actual table. But anyway, you'll pass this around and and you can uh, you're basically looking at. Each one of these rooms, if you want, you, um, you have two actions each, and you, it does not cost an action to look at any of these things. So if you want to read what it is, like, um, like this one will say, let's say if I want to, oh, I want to read, I want to see what's going on in here, and it says, the door leads to a small front room of the mansion, and that's all it says. And then if you were to go, well, I want to know what's going on in there, so you can hit explore, but see that little action? There's a little, like action thing right there you, that's going to cost you an action so then I'd so this would open up and explains like, you know, what the room's about um, how to lay towels how to lay mar more markers and it says you may move one space in so moving costs an action but it says that's a free action so I got I would be able to move in and then I'll be able to search this if I'd wanted to it says a large chest is tucked in behind the bar. So then that would spend my last action to open it up. It is telling me I'm going to have to do a... It's actually a puzzle. That's another thing cool about this game. It's a, There's puzzles in this too. So whoever is in the same room as you can uh, help you with these puzzles. But if no one's in the room with you, can, they cannot help you with these puzzles. So anyway, it's saying that I would have to do 